Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided to do the Zanita backpack by Aura Rosa. Um, and I did it with no binding, just because I felt like it. Um, so I didn't actually know if it was going to work, but I recorded it all just in case. And it's come out really nice, actually. It just needs an iron, because I've only just finished, but it's late here. So I'm going to pack up and iron it tomorrow. But if you'd like to see how to make this bag without a binding, please stay tuned. Alrighty, so let's get started. So I've put all of my hardware in here, which I think I need. Um, and I've got the pattern just off to the side, because I haven't really had a chance to look at it yet. Um, and I just thought it might be fun to do one from direct from a pattern instead of me reading through, so I can do it in order, kind of. But the first thing I'm going to do, because I've got a nice full bobbin, is my straps. So I'm going to take my double-sided tape. Now this is just cheap double-sided tape from the reject shop. Um, it's nothing special. Lots of people ask me, does it gum up my needle? And the answer is not as yet. It never has. Um, but if you have that problem, you can get non-stick needles. They are actually a thing that you can buy for your machine. Um, so they're made out of, I don't know, something. I think they're usually blue in colour from what I've seen. Um, and they are designed to be non-stick so that stuff like the residue of double-sided tape will stick to them. So instead of doing um, the four straps that I fold over, I'm going to do half and half. So I've got two inches of this and one and a half inches of my accent. And then I'm just going to make them the way I always make straps because I like them and they're fun. But the other main straps on the bag I have done the way the pattern says where I will be double folding them. So we're just going to go along and I've realized now that I possibly should have done this um, before I turn the camera on but my husband and my child have gone to his mate's place to play with weightlifting stuff so I have free time to do a video which never happens. And I've had this sitting in my top drawer of things to make for about a week. So it's time to do it. So I'm just... The quickest way I've found to do this, and it did take a little bit of practice, was to pinch together and then push down. And that may seem odd, but it is the best way that I have found to do this in a quick fashion. So you press it together roughly what you think is in the middle and then you just push down and it seems to get straight to the middle, which is awesome. Now I've chosen to do an accent colored thread. So I'm, I've actually matched the lining color a little bit. So the bag on the outside will be black and white, but I've chosen a teal green thread because it matches the inside and I just thought that would be fun instead of just having a black and white bag to kind of break it up a little bit so I'm going to put my stitch length on four so it's nice and decorative and then I'm going to stitch across the bottom and then I'm just going to hold it in the center of the vinyl and stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric accent part If you don't think that you can just hold it like this, you could put another piece of double-sided tape down the center of the vinyl and then stick this on, which would make the stitching process quicker. But the overall time will either be the same or a little bit longer because you're still going to have to place the fabric onto the vinyl. Now, even though I don't need to, I'm just going to stitch across the top because it's the quickest way to get to the other side. Um, you could pull it out and trim it, but you actually waste more thread doing it that way than just sewing across four stitches. So then you want to make sure that you're tucking in the other raw edge on the other side. And then we're just going to continue to stitch down one eighth of an inch. And 
And then when we get back to the start, we do two little back stitches and then trim the tails. So you can't really see it from the back, but it is a different color. So it is a little bit of an accent. It's not wild, like it's not hot pink, but it's just going to be like a subtle bit of color on the outside of the bag. Because occasionally I can do subtle. Contrary to like all the bags I've made ever on camera. But I try to pick bright colours for videos so that you guys can see better. Alright, so we're going to do the same to the other strap. Just going to move along. And I should probably warn you now, there is a small chance that I won't get enough time to make the whole bag. Because I don't know how long they're gone for. Hubby may call me and I may have to go pick up my child. I don't know yet. And if that happens, I'll just finish it tomorrow morning before everybody wakes up. Alright, so I'm nearly finished this bit. Um, fake nails help, weirdly enough. Um, I get fake nails for sewing purposes, not just because they make my fingers look pretty, because it's actually harder to horse ride in nails. But I get them because it makes sewing a lot easier. It's like having stilettos on your fingers. Um, yeah, I like them. They work for me and how I do stuff sewing related. That's not me telling you that you should all go out and get fake nails. That's just why I always seem to have them these days in the videos because I have found it much easier to sew with them on. All right, so I'm just going to line this up as best I can all the way along and any random threads don't pull on the random threads. You should trim them uh, because you don't know how long that they will kind of tear down and wreck stuff for. So if you have a, a little thread from the fabric sticking out, either just tuck it in or trim it off if it's too long. Uh, so this fabric as well is a drill. So it's a little bit thicker. Not that that really makes much of a difference at the moment. And drill is different to twill. It's like a subsection of it. I had this conversation with an American dude. We were talking about fabric and he thought I just mistyped. Um, and he thought I meant twill. But it's actually drill and it is different. get back to the start we're going to back stitch and then trim those tails off and so then that's my second one done so I can pop those aside now and now I'll go back to looking at the actual pattern so in my box of tricks I have strap connectors so I'm going to be using the drill I did contemplate using vinyl that would also look nice but I'd like more of the pattern uh, so I could iron this, and if I was smart, I would have done it off camera. But now that I'm on camera, I'm just going to use double-sided tape. Mainly just because I can. So I'm going to fold each side into the center. And this should be quite easy because it's fabric. Uh, but it is quite a thick fabric. If you're using a thinner fabric but you want to use fabric, uh, you might want to put a little bit of interfacing on it. But drill is what they make work pants out of, so I'm pretty confident that it'll be fine. One side and then the other. So we're just folding that into the center as well. And then I'm going to take my little square rings. So I'm not using the chunky ones for you, this, I'm using the thinner ones. And it doesn't necessarily matter, but where the join is, I like to hide that in this. So I will be stitching it this way just because that's what I like to do. 
no other real reason. So I'm going to back stitch just because I want to lock those stitches in and I don't want it to come undone while I'm attaching it to the bag. And then we're going to pivot, go the other way, and then through the end. I'm going to trim off these tails so they don't get stuck in the next one. And then I'm going to chain stitch the next one on as well. So I'm just going to fold it in half and match the raw edges. And then you can just pull on it and it should make a bit of a crease. And then stitch and back stitch. Needle down and pivot. That one's a little bit too far, so I'm just going to manually replace that and then back stitch. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So then we're going to do the same thing again to our handles. I'm going to move the top out of my way. Now these are going to be double folded so that you'll see that they are thicker. So again, more double-sided tape. And yes, I do go through a lot of double-sided tape because I make a lot of bags. But when I go to the reject shop, I tend to just buy all of the ones that I can see, which is usually about six to ten on the shelf. And that does me around a month, depending on what bags I'm making and how many straps they have. This bag has a lot of straps, so I'll use a lot of tape. I also use my tape um, when embroidering vinyl, um, and I've had a few people ask me to do a video on that, so I'm going to do that for you when I pick something to actually embroider. Alright, so I'm peeling off the backing, and then I'm going to fold both sides into the center. Work my way down. Same on the other side. So I'm still just going to pinch and push. That's what I've decided to call it because it works for me. It is a little bit harder to do with the thicker pieces, but it's not impossible. And my theory is if I practice enough, it'll become easy for me. Actually, what we might do, what does it say to do? Yep. So it wants us to stitch the handles down the center. So we can do that. I'm going to fold it in half. And then if you need to, if this is going to shift too much, you can either stick more double-sided tape or you can come along with your clips and clip it all the way down the edge. Um, I'm not going to be doing this, but I just thought I should show you. So if I was to clip it, I'd probably put them every approximately inch and a half. You don't want them too close or too far apart or the, their presence is therefore useless. Um... But yeah, so this one's just to do an eighth of an inch from the center. So I just want to line that up. I'm going to backstitch just to lock it in. And then I'm going to fold it and stitch approximately an eighth of an inch from the center. Now, if you can't eyeball the center, um, you could draw a line with a Chaco pen or chalk pencil or piece of chalk. Or if you're using a lighter colour strap, you could just draw it on with a friction pen. But in this case where I'm using black, I would most likely draw a line with Chaco pen because then it'll just wipe off. And then I'm going to do one stitch over and then readjust and go back up the other side. You could also, if you wanted to, just do um, one stitch right in the middle and just have it'll end up having three instead of four. vinyl 
I don't like to go full speed, I find that it's more likely to give me issues in my stitching. That is now beautifully stitched in the center. So now we can do the same to this one. backing off and then again so we're going to pinch and push I'm sure there's a name for this technique but I'm calling it the pinch and push because that's all that comes to mind every time I do it another e-wig for you so like so all right so you may also want to run this along the edge of a table and what that will do is actually set the creases in better for you which is always fun they're just slightly more creased now, which also gives the probability that the um, vinyl won't lift from here a lot better. So if you're using a really stiff vinyl, get the corner of a table and just run it along. Obviously not if it's full of splinters, that's a terrible idea. But otherwise, I feel like my logic is pretty sound. It'll just crease it more and make it sit flatter. Again, I'm just doing this in slow sections. There's no hurry. I mean, there is a little bit of recording, but other than that, there's no hurry. One stitch over. It's actually technically one and a half for the stitch length that I've used, but that's okay. also wish to check your bobbin because I just heard mine go and I only had like two inches left to stitch. I did see that coming though. We've done a lot of straps in the last 17 minutes. All right I'm gonna hit pause and do a bobbin. I have changed my pants because it's too hot. I have finished off that last two inches of the strap because why not. Um, and so now we need to grab our front and back panel so again this was from spotlight it's a fun poppy fabric uh, i'm not sure if it's still current or not i know i haven't had it that long but i because i don't work there anymore i have no idea what they've discontinued so it might still exist it might not so i'm just finding the center of both of them and then popping my scissors to the side and so then I'm going to turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab a friction pen and I'm picking a blue one because that's the only color I like to use. Occasionally other colors are helpful but mostly no. So then I'm going to mark a line according to the pattern up both the pieces so if you're new to my channel I don't give out measurements because you should go and buy the pattern and it'll tell you unless it's a free pattern sometimes I'll tell you but even then I try not to because it's a good habit to be in all right it's also why I usually do my measurements over here so you can't see so I'm going to grab one of my straps 
and pick a side, any side, doesn't really matter. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge and then up the side and over. So this is going to be done nice and slowly because this is a lot of layers. I've got um, a fusible foam on the back of this as well as my extra heavy iron-on fusible. Well, fusible is iron-on, non-woven. One more, and then we're going to stitch across, preferably in a straight line. Needle down and go back the other way. And then back stitch because I always back stitch. All right, so then we're gonna follow this so it's flat out and twist it around so that there's no actual twists in it, which I know is a silly sentence, but it works. And then we're going to stitch one eighth of an inch up the other side. And then twist, and then across, and then twist, and down the other side. And again, I'm not racing because I don't want to damage anything. And now we have a handle. I'm going to grab the other handle and do the same thing all over again. This is why we measure in pairs. Ugh, I heard that. My bobbin misbehaved. The more you use your machine, the more you're in tune with it, in my belief. Uh, so I can hear when it's going to give me grief. Usually within three stitches I can get it. Sometimes I'm not listening for the bobbin, as you can see in my previous videos. But for the most part, especially when I'm off camera and not talking constantly, I definitely notice when it's got an issue. Trim your tails, and then again, I do this with all straps, so I pull it out and then twist around so there's no kinks. Bend around is probably a better word. Either or. Line it up, go again. Now, the pattern has rivets, so you could definitely put some rivets in here if you like, just to really reinforce these. Um, but this is extremely strong thread, so I'm pretty happy. With the fact that they're not going to break. Um, but you could definitely put one or two rivets along here, under the across part that you've done here. Alright, so that's those parts done and dusted. So now we're going to grab our outside pocket piece and it's lining. Again, this is a drill um, because I just thought they were really cute together. All right, so we can finally go back down to a joining stitch for the first time in this video. So I'm going to put right sides together and we're going to stitch this top edge. Um, if you're new to bag making, I highly recommend grabbing some wonder clips or even pins if you haven't made this out of vinyl at all, or waterproof canvas. If you're using waterproof canvas, definitely use pegs and not pins, uh, and then you would just keep going. I actually don't need to do this. This was just for your benefit. Don't be embarrassed if you have to use uh, pegs, pins, clips, whatever because there was a time where I would pin, clip, and peg everything ever. I have just since, I guess, advanced through practice. All right, 
So because this is a curve and quite a tight curve, if you have access to pinking shears or zigzag scissors, you should definitely uh, trim down this edge. Now mine are pretty blunt, so there's a good chance this won't work. And we're just going to end up with like a ratty mess. I have been, it's been suggested to me a whole bunch of different ways that I can attempt to sharpen them. So far, I haven't really had much success. This is only cutting this so well because it's a drill fabric. So don't be fooled. All right. Flip it over. And then we're going to press this and I'm going to finger press it. But you could also grab an iron and iron this. Over my Christmas break, I am going to reorganize my sewing room yet again to make sure that I've got an ironing station next to my sewing machine. All right, but that's actually finger pressed pretty well. You could have also put piping in this, which would make it very cute. All right, so then we can go back up to a decorative stitch length, which for me today is four. And we're going to, oh, no, see that? That's got a, not, which is just very rude. So with industrial machines, I have been told this and I don't do it because I'm naughty. I'm actually meant to hold these threads when I start stitching, apparently. It prevents them from retracting into the machine. And then we're going to back stitch when we get to the other end. We're going to take our straps, our shoulder backpack straps, and our strap adjuster hardware. And I'm first going to put these on to the straps. Now I'm going to do my crisscross thing because I'm really enjoying doing that lately. Um, so I'm actually somewhere between decorative and joining. So I'm about I'm about three and a quarter for my stitch length this time. I don't want it too skinny because I don't want to over perforate the vinyl, but I still want it to have some weight behind it. So I'm to get around my um, hardware. I'm actually going to back stitch here, which is going to get me to the corner, so then I can stitch across manually crank the last one and then twist it and stitch up and that way I didn't really have to contend with the hardware and it didn't distort my stitches so that's the first one and then this is the second one so to make sure that I'm going to see the accent fabric I spent all that time stitching on I always put the vinyl to that middle strap connector edge. Now these are the ones with the movable strap adjuster bit. I actually won't be stocking these anymore, uh, but I thought that I should use up the last of them. There's nothing wrong with them. I've just found something I like more, but instead of selling you something that I dislike more, I thought I should use them all. They work just as well. I just, I don't know, I like the look of the solid. My tastes have changed, apparently. All right. So that is now two strap connectors attached. So I'm also going to take these little ones I did earlier. And we're going to... these onto here at an angle and we're going to back stitch we're just tacking them in place back stitching just make sure that it doesn't come off because I feel like that's important we want things to stay on while we're doing stuff all right and so then I just want to Have it wrong sides up and I'm going to thread into the back 
of the square ring and then come up through the strap connector and back down the other side and then attach it up here. Now I've got a little bit of excess fabric here. I can trim it off. It's not really in my way, but we'll just trim it off for, you know, clarity's sake. And then it wants us to stitch it here. So I'm just going to use two wonder clips to put it in place. And then I'm going to attach the other side. So wrong side up, go into the back of the square ring. And then up one side, making sure there's no twists. And then back in the other side. And then up the top. So that's where I want it and so then I'm just going to tack it in place within the seam allowance. So I'm just going to fold that back so it's out of the way and stitch across the top. Like so. So that's in the seam allowance so we won't see it. And I'm getting a phone call so excuse me. Alrighty. So I have my flat piece and my other pocket piece. So I'm going to take the pocket piece and put right sides together. Now I always like to put the, um, the least stabilized or the softest piece on the bottom where the feed dogs are. This is just a little thing I like to do. I find that it's less likely to pull it disproportionately or unevenly. And then I'm less likely to get wrinkles and things. So that's just my personal thing. So I always put, yeah. The lightest fabric once interfaced underneath. So I've stitched across there. I'm going to put these right sides together as well. And then stitch around the curve. So slow and steady wins the race. I'm going to try and clip that off. I only took that off because I didn't want it to adjust the weight while I was stitching that curve because it would most likely make it less even. So I'm going to take my zigzag scissors and just trim the curves so that they're going to sit nicely when we turn it the right way through. Throw that in the bin. And then push it out. Now I am going to pause the video and iron this because I want this to be really nice and crispy. So I can get it pretty good with just my fingers. Actually, because it's drill, I've got it quite good. But I am still going to iron it just to make it that little bit better. So give me a minute. Okay, so I also ironed the other part of the pocket so that it is nice and flat. And then I'm just going to top stitch both of these. I'm making sure I back stitch at both sides, but that's just because I don't want anything to come out. It's a really good habit to be in to backstitch, guys. You'll notice I slow down when I get to the curves, but I don't stop. Sometimes stopping makes it worse. Okay. Trim off all those tails. And then I'm going to take this piece, and I'm going to take my front pocket flap, and I'm just going to open it out like this. And I'm going to base that. No, I'm not going to base that. I'm going to clip that. Because I am doing a magnet. Because I don't have a really cool um, connector. Something I need to get onto, actually. So. What I want to do. Is before I attach this. 
But the idea is this is what we're going for. But before I attach all of that, I first want to find the center of this and put in my magnet. So because this is a raceable pen, I can kind of just scribble on it however I see fit. And of all the things I grabbed, I forgot the gaskets. Gaskets are very important to keep things in, in my opinion. I love a good gasket. I would not ever install magnets without them. I think they are very vital to keeping it all together. So because I'm doing this on a fabric, I'm going to take my fray stopper glue. Now I've had this for ages. I think the whole bottle cost me about six or seven dollars. And I use it a lot. I use it a lot off camera as well. It's not just for you guys. Uh, and it lasts ages. I've spilt a lot of it, like twice at least. But it's still still got plenty in it. I'm down to the about a quarter of a bottle. So I will think about buying a new one soon. So I'm going to take my knife, and I always have the sharp edge pointing away from me, because it's good practice, and I'm going to stick it in the top edge and just push on that angle, and it will cut down my line perfectly. By doing it that way, I've got the most control out of the blade and I'm less likely to slip and overcut. Now this stuff comes out really, really quick, so you don't really need to squeeze it. I know I just did, but I also thought that my tip was blocked, so anyway. So we're just going to put the magnet into here. Now I'm using the male part, which is usually the flatter part with the little protrusion. That's why it's called male. And then I'm just going to bend both of those edges outwards so that I now have a magnetic snap. So before I seal up this pocket, I need to put in the female part. Now to do that, I need to find the center of the bag. And by do that, we fold it in half you can just add like a small crease if you need to and then figure out where this is going to sit so it's going to sit about there in the center of the bag so on that fold line i just created and then i can place my magnet right where it needs to be The easiest way to do that is because it's the male part. You just stick the circle in the male part. Bob's your uncle. So again, I'm using my friction pen to mark that point. And I'm going to stick my hand up under just that outside piece so I don't want to get all the rest of those layers. And then in and on the angle. If you have to put too much pressure while doing that, your blade is most likely blunt and you should get a new one. It's not sharp blades that are dangerous, it's blunt ones. Because the blunter they are, the more force you put, which gives you the more opportunity to slip and hurt yourself. When you know they're sharp, there's no force behind it because it just cuts. And this one I think was $3 at a $2 shop. Or, um, like a, I think you've got like a Dollar Tree in America. I don't know. That was just a cheap one. But they're still sharp, so it still counts. Okay. The magnet is in. You can even attach that on. Now, because I've got this raw edge all the way along the top, what I'm actually going to do is we're going to measure slightly down and this is where I'm going to put this on to stitch. I've seen this in another bag and I like doing it this way. So this is the way I'm going to attach the pocket. So we're going to line it up in the center like we always do. Ah! Undo the magnet, that's the center, slide it down to the line. 
And then I'm going to stitch with a joining stitch length, which is what I'm on. Move my hardware out of the way. I also want to lift that bit up. And I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the flap. Like so, making sure I backstitch. And then I'm going to fold this down, and that should all match up. And you can prove it because your magnet should clip together by itself. So I've pulled the lining out of the way so that we're only stitching this to the front bit. And then I'm going to go a quarter of an inch down from where I just stitched. And what this is going to do is it's going to hold the flap so it stays down. And it's also going to hide all that stitching and raw edges we just did. And back stitch. And then trim your tails. Now the pattern, again, it has some rivets. They could potentially look quite cute. You could do those if you wanted to. But this is now my front. So I've got my magnet, my pocket, and so now I'm going to take all of this, including my lining, and I'm going to add that into those clips because I want it to all hold together now. And then I'm going to take this piece and baste it to my front piece. Like this. I'm going to start along the bottom and I'm going to go slowly over where the handles are because that's a lot of layers. And I'm trying to just stitch well within the seam allowance. This is just basing it together. So now I can come and start at the top if I want to. Or you could have started from the bottom. So again, this is just basing it all. So now this is just one layer to work with later on. Look at that. How cute is that for a front? Let's go a little pocket. Yeah, I like it. Okay, next part of the pattern is zipper gusset. All right. So I'm going to take my two outer and two lining pieces and some zipper tape, which I have decided on rainbow because why not? So I'm going to have one right side up and then one right side down. No, wait. Lining right side up, zipper right side up, outside right side down. Oh, I think I'm getting too tired. Perhaps I should stop. That was close. I nearly stitched all of that wrong. All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to back stitch at the start and then I'm just going to hold it in place and stitch it. So this part of my foot is actually running along the zipper. If you're new to bag making though, I highly recommend that you clip this with some wonder clips. And I keep all of my um, zipper tape by the meter. So now that I've stitched that, I will chop off the excess zipper because I know where it needs to end. This just helps me to waste as little as possible. And then I wind this back up and stick it back in the tub of zipper tape. Everybody's got their own thing. Uh, some people pre-cut it for the whole uh, project. I just have it in a tub with easy access. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold both of these back. Actually, I'm just going to fold one of these back, sorry and top stitch one eighth of an inch from this edge where the zipper joins the fabric. And I'm making sure 
that the seam allowance is tucked under that so it's going to stitch it down nice and flat now again if you want to you can crank it up to a decorative stitch length but i'm not going to this time i'm just going to stitch it as it is i can also hear that i am running out of bobbin thread again That's okay. All right, and then we can just fold that one down. So now I wanna make sure that my poppy dogs are going the same way. So I wanna go that way. So that when I open them, all my dogs are facing the same way. See what I did there? So I'm gonna put that on that way. Now again, I'll do the clipping just to show you. When I clip things together, I like to do two items first up and then add in any extras that I need to. I am not good at pinning three things at the same time perfectly even and quickly. So I would prefer to come through and just clip the two. Sorry, I paused because I was concentrating then. Clip the two pieces together like so and then grab the other one and add it in so again i want this to face this way so that my dogs are going the same way so i'm going to flip this over like that and then add it into the clips now normally i wouldn't clip this but i am showing you i've got a bit of a kink i don't really know what's going on here hold on there is a slight chance that I cut them the wrong size or that I've just clipped them weird. This is why I don't like doing three at a time. Another thing I like to do is baste them together. So I would potentially, if this was going to be tricky, which it now is, what I would normally do is baste the zippers of the lining and then come in and put the third piece on top. Alright, so I'm going to back stitch, and then a quicker way to do this is to just spin it around with the needle up, bend this over, and then top stitch. And that way you waste a little bit less thread by having that tail. And then back stitch. Okay. So now we've got the dogs facing the same way on the top and the bottom, which is awesome. And then I am going to put two zipper pulls onto this zipper. Uh, because I haven't done it in a while, I'm going to bring over my zipper jig. So this is literally just a clamp with a very, very bent um, fold on it. And this is what I use as my zipper jig. Because the last time I looked up a zipper jig, which was before I got this made, they were about $50 plus postage. And the postage was about $30. So it was going to be 80 bucks. And my husband made this for me out of scrap in the shed. Okay. So that's one end on. And then we're going to take the zipper and put it on the other end. So I'm just going to crack it open a little bit like this. I actually find I need to crack it open more for the zipper jig than do than if I was hand doing it. And then you want to get them together and make sure that there's no like weird little loops poking out the side. And that shows me now that they are even. So I'm going to now take my outside gusset and my lining gusset. Now my outside gusset I've done in vinyl just because this is the part the bag will sit on and so I don't want it to get damaged at all. And so I'm going to put the right sides together and then I'm going to stitch one side and then the other. So I'm going to stitch up to but not over the zipper like so and I'm only doing the outer fabric which in my case right now is the vinyl and the black and white dolls. And then I'm going to take 
the lining piece and making sure that my dogs are all going the same way since I've put so much effort into it thus far. I'm then going to join this to the lining pieces, again up to the zipper. Now unlike previous bags, I won't be slipping in any D-rings, uh, but we still do it this way because we don't want all of this joined so that it's easier to attach our lining pieces later. If you have this joined, trust me when I say it's more difficult. So up to, but not over the zipper. And then to just seal it off, we line it all up straight with all of the layers and then just stitch the gap close over the zip. So the only part where everything's joined together is at the zipper. And then trim your tails. See? So it technically goes all the way across, but it just took us three steps to get there. But I promise it's worth it later. So. Same with the other end. It doesn't matter which end you start with. You can do lining or outer. Lining first is usually easier, but not always. And it's not super necessary. It's also potentially just a personal preference of mine. Up to, but not over the zipper. And so then we're going to join the outers. So again, shift this over out of the way. Stitch and then trim. And then flip. Pull back that lining so it's out of the way. Up to but not over the zipper and then flatten it all out and then stitch the difference making sure that we're back stitching at all points and yes it is a lot of back stitching but again worth it because it's gonna it's gonna last so now that I've got my end sealed I can actually open my zipper because I'm not worried about them falling off not that I was really worried before but again just the order in which we do these things. Okay, so now we can pop that aside. So that's another piece done. Now we are up to our side pockets. So I have chosen to do the fabric on the sides. Each to their own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put right sides together. and then stitch these together. Now I'm gonna chain stitch to minimize my bobbin wastage, which I'm sure is coming, I can hear it. And then I'm gonna trim this one off and come and do the bottom edge as well, because we wanna seal all top and bottoms on these pockets. And then we're gonna flip this Right sides out. And again, you could have put a little bit of piping in there if we're doing the piping thing. That would look very cute. And then I'm going to top stitch just the top edge of the pockets. We're not going to top stitch the bottom because where the top stitching on the bottom will be is actually how we're going to join it. I think I should be following these instructions better because I'm not doing it the way the instructions say. But anyway, we're still going to get there, all right? And then backstitch. Oh, see? And there's the end of my bobbin. I knew it was coming. All right, I'm going to go and wind another bobbin and let my dogs in so they stop barking. And then we'll do the next bit. So now we're going to, I have ironed these flat, so I'm now going to attach these to the side. 
So I'm going to line up the centre on this end, which is a little bit difficult to see because of the way I'm building the bag, which is very different to the pattern, but whatever. And then I'm just going to stitch along that edge. So you can put it in any way you like. I'm going to do it this way. So we're just going to stitch one eighth of an inch along the bottom. Would help if I turn the machine on. We won't get very far without it. And then back stitch. And then if you want to, you can come in and baste the sides down. Like so. And then I'm going to come and do the other side. Now I'm always going to do the bottom first. And then I can line up the sides because of the shape that it is. Like so. So now my side pockets are on. So I'm going to do the same to this side. Line it up where I need it. Line up the bottom, stitch the bottom first, an eighth of an inch. Back stitch, because I like back stitching. And then stitch up the side, basting it down. Like so. And then the other side. So now everything is basted together nicely. Loving it. So now we can move on to the linings. So for the lining, I've got two of these. One I'm going to turn into a slip pocket and one I'm going to turn into a zipper pocket. Now again, I'm doing one a little bit different to the pattern, but that's just because I can. Alright, so this is my pocket that I folded in half. And the side that I'm drawing on, I, do, I want it to be like facing in the wrong direction. So I always like to measure three quarters of an inch in. From the edges to do this placement and then I make the box three eighths of an inch and half an inch from the fold. So it doesn't matter what size pocket panel I'm doing, those measurements always work out to be the same. It just works out to be different size when I use a different size pocket is all. Alright, so then I want to place this where I want it. So I want it about there so I've got a little bit of a gap. And so on my joining stitch length, I'm going to stitch around the box, making sure I backstitch at the start and the end. I'm going to move my clips out of the way so I don't knock them all on the floor again. Which, by the way, is a very frequent occurrence because I forget that they sit here and they're not ever directly in my line of sight and then I knock them. Alright, backstitch. Take these out. I believe the actual um, pattern has a, a panel that you would stitch on to do this bit. But I like my way just as much. So then I've folded it over to cut a slit in the centre. And then I'm going to cut out... These are very small scissors. I'm going to triangle out the corners about half an inch from the edge so that we get that. I'm going to do the same to the other end. You want to get as close to those stitches as you can without actually cutting them, because cutting them would be bad. And then I'm going to just push that whole pocket through the gap that we just created. And then you can come along and roll it in your fingers and finger press that down. Or you can iron it. Okay, so then we need some more zipper tape. So I'm going to get a piece of zipper tape that's the same size as the pocket. 
And then I'm going to put my zipper pull on. I'm going to use my zipper jig, but over here, because you've already seen it once in this video. I used to keep it on the other side, but I found that I kept poking myself in the eye, and that's just not fun. So we moved it for safety reasons. And then I'm going to take this whole panel and lay it over the top of the zipper, lining up the edge of the zipper with the edge of the fabric, because theoretically we made it the same size. I'm going to back stitch a couple of stitches, and then we're going to top stitch around the zipper panel. Now when I get close to the zipper pull, I'm going to stop with my needle down and zip it open. Needle down and pivot. Whoops! Now if you're using a metal zip, obviously don't stitch over the zipper. That would be bad. Zip it up. When you get back to the start back stitch, pull that out and trim off those tails. I think my snips are starting to get blunt again. There's only so many times you can sharpen them before it's time for a new pair. Alright, so I'm going to just hold this pocket, hold the main panel, and the pocket will actually fold over onto itself. And then we can just stitch down each side, making sure that we backstitch at both ends, of course. And you also want to make sure that you're catching that zipper tape in that stitching. That is also quite important because if you don't catch the ends of the zippers, then they're going to be just floating around inside the zipper pocket. And then this will eventually fray and get damaged. So we're going to leave the po bottom of the zipper pocket open because I'm going to turn the bag through. I know it comes with binding, but I'm pretty sure there's already a video about that. So I thought I'd do something different. Okay. So now with this pocket, because my fabric's directional, I want a slip pocket. So I'm going to take my scissors. Actually, I'm going to take my knife because my scissors are very blunt. And pointing the knife away from me, I'm going to cut the pocket in half. This would definitely potentially be better with scissors, but the only scissors I've got next to me are those tiny ones and the pinking shears, neither of which are ideal. Um, I was cutting out other bags before I decided to do this, so that all the scissors are over on my cutting table. Because I finally picked what I was going to do with that dragon scale vinyl for anyone that watched the live the other day all right so now my pockets won't be upside down so i'm going to put them together like this and i'm going to stitch start here stitch around and leave a gap at the top or the side or the bottom or wherever you like Needle down and pivot. Needle down and pivot. And I just want to leave in the, a gap in the top big enough to turn this through. But before I turn it through, I also want to clip off these corners on just a little bit more than a 45 degree angle. I don't want them to clash into each other. That would be very annoying. Like so. And then we're going to turn the pocket in the right way, or out the right way, whichever way you want to look at that. And then we want to poke out the corners. Now these scissors are really good for poking. Uh, they were $4 from Bunnings. In the, they're designed to take clippings from trees, so they were very, very sharp for four dollars, which I like. You can also just use your finger if that works for you. Sometimes it will, and sometimes it won't. The fact that I've got fake nails definitely helps that poking situation. And then we want to tuck that under, and I'm going to top stitch along the top of this pocket. that both now looks decorative and has sealed the pocket up. 
And then I can just take this and place it wherever I want, which is right there. And I'm going to stitch down, across, and up the side. And then I'm also going to split the pocket. But probably not perfectly in half, because I never find that I need two perfectly sized um, pockets. I always find that I need one bigger than the other. So as a general rule, if I'm doing slip pockets, I usually do them about two-thirds to one-third in the ratio of pocketness. And yes, I'm realizing that that's not really a word, but you understand my meaning. So I usually, so this one, I could do it quite skinny, so I've got a pen and then I can fit something else, or I can do it more here, so this side will fit a phone and that side will fit, you know, a muesli bar or something. Something food related. And then we're just going to back stitch at both ends. And then if you want to, you can do oops, one stitch over and stitch an eighth of an inch from that line to give it like a real um, stability about it. And it looks cute with the two lines too. Don't forget that. See, you get these two cute little lines. So that's now a very, very stable pocket. I can get my full hand in that one, and that one's great for a muesli bar or some pens or whatever you like. Awesome. So now we're up to construction. So I always do my um, lining pieces first. Now the pattern has it as a binding, so you would just sew all the pieces together with a binding. Um, but I just thought I'd do something different. See if it can be done without binding. Because I know there's a lot of people that don't love binding. I think it has a place in certain bags. And yeah. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You don't have to do it my way. You never know. I'm not at the end of the video yet. This might be a total flop and you might not even see it. Or I might put it up to prove to you that sometimes my plans don't work. Who knows? Honestly, I don't know yet. So we're going to see. Sometimes binding works out better. Sometimes if you hate binding or you're scared of it, you'd like to see an alternative. Whatever makes you happy, really. So I'm just going to find the centre of all sides at once and then I don't have to come back and do it later, which makes my life way easier. Alright, so there, 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 there. Alright, so that's now all my sides with the centres found on that gusset piece. So now I'm going to fold these in half and find the centres and then this will line up with the other clips. Same with this one. You notice I'm not using my little blue snips for this. I have definitely cut myself too many times, even on camera. I just hide it well that it hurt. Uh, so I no longer do this with snips because it just, it's not worth it. I like my fingers the way they are. Okay. Now, because I'm going to turn this bag through and I'm going to, I always like to do it opposite where the pocket opening is. So this is the end that I want to leave open. And the reason for that is, is because it's easy to pull this up through the zipper pocket that's on the opposite side. So I find that the easiest way to turn things. So that's what I'm going to do. But I'm still just going to take my clips and make a mess. And then come out as far flat as that is and put a clip there and then do the same to the other side because that's where I want to leave my gap. Then I'm going to come up to the top and get my top centered and then work my way from here down to the other edge.
Now because this is a curve, I know I've said it a million times before, but it's a curve, it's a 3D object, so you should hold it as such to get the curve to sit properly. And then with this bit of um, seam allowance, you always want that to face the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to clip that down. And then we're just going to come along and clip this. And if you hold it in a 3D object like that, it will fit perfectly. If you've done all your seam allowances correctly. And then we're going to come and do the other side. So I understand that this part would definitely be quicker if we were stitching it all together. Um, but then you've still got to do the binding. So it depends on how good at binding you are. Now you can make your own binding. Um, you usually cut it on the bias of the fabric. So that's at a 45 degree angle to what the grain line is. Uh, which is the selvage edge, which is the edge of your fabric. So if you cut it at a 45 degree angle in comparison to the edge of your fabric, that's the best way to do a bias, especially if you're going around bends. If you're just doing perfectly straight lines with your binding, you can actually just cut it on the straight. I highly recommend using either quilting cotton or a poplin so that it's not too thick. Okay, I've pinned it all. I'm going to have it with the gusset up because I find that the easiest way to stitch. And I'm going to start here and go all the way around. So as always, we are going to lose my thread at least once in a video. That's fine. It's fine. Stitch and back stitch. And then we're going to just go around the bag, pulling the clips off as we go. And I'm just going to keep moving all of this part of the bag out of my way so that it doesn't get caught up. I'm always trying to stop with the needle down so if I need to reposition anything it's easier to do. You notice I just keep pushing the middle part of the gusset out of the way so that I can stitch with ease. And then we're, now that we're back to here, I'm going to back stitch and leave that whole bottom section open. And then to aid with it sitting nicely, I'm going to come in with some zigzag scissors and just trim down this whole seam allowance. The less seam allowance, the less likely it is to interrupt when we turn it in. Now obviously with binding you wouldn't have to do this because you need that and this is where the binding would be. But you can actually make pretty much any bag. There are a few exceptions, either with binding or without binding. Okay. All of that in the bin. Scissors back up out of the way. And let's do the other side. So that's in. That looks nice. So with this side, we actually want to pin the base because we're going to stitch the whole way around. I don't need to put a lot of pins in the base because it's flat, which is lucky for me. And then I'm just going to line up those notches that I made earlier. You also want to face all of your clips towards the gusset, they'll be easy to pull off later when we get to that. Okay. Moving 
down again, making sure this is pointing towards the bottom. Well, it's quite late. It just looks at the time. All right, and then the other side. So again, I am holding it like a 3D object, especially at the curves. So you can do that any way you like. I find it easiest to do it kind of like that. So hold it and then clip it. Now, if you've got a little bit of kind of puckering on the outside of the clip, that's perfectly fine. Um, just not where you're going to stitch. That's where you want it to be nice and smooth. And I've caught a little bit of this when I was tacking down those um, side pockets, but I can just clip it off because it wasn't going to affect anything where I clipped. So that does happen, and then so long as you've caught outside of the seam allowance, you can actually just cut it, which is what I just did. It's like the tiniest amount. It's not going to affect anything because I cut off most seam allowance anyway. Okay, and one more right there. So this time I'm going to stitch the whole way around after I trim off those tails. So you can start from wherever, but I always find it easiest to start at a flat spot. Don't feel you have to go as fast as me. I've now just realised the time, so I thought I should sew a little bit faster. when we get back to the start, trim off those tails, and then grab your zigzag scissors. I'm very impressed with how well they're working today. Oh, I jinxed it. See? Just there. It just died on me. died a little bit so I'm gonna just do the corner I'm gonna leave the base because they've got some issues now I jinxed it it's fine okay so the inside of the bag is now pretty much done so now to do the outside I'm gonna tuck the handle into the bag so now it's out of my way And we already found the middle of the bottom of the base, so that should be easy to match up. And I'm going to need a lot more pins or clips, pegs, whatever we're calling them, um, on the outer piece because it's going to fight me more because of the vinyl and all the layers, which is not ideal, but that's okay. All right, so I've matched the bottom, now I'm going to match the top. And I'm still making sure all of my clips are facing the gusset. Oops. And again, I'm making sure that this is facing down. I'm also making sure that because I've basted that pocket on, I'm not super worried, but I just want to make sure it's still in my seam allowance. Um, so if you've done a lot of thick stuff on this bag, this might actually be an easier option than trying to stitch binding through all those layers. Might not be too, you might love binding. 
I don't dislike it. I actually kind of find it kind of fun. But each to their own. I like binding more than drop-in linings. I don't dislike drop-in linings. I just find them fiddly. Um, they're a lot less fiddly now that I've got my cylinder arm machine. I will admit that. Um, but I can't do drop-in linings on a domestic. I have not acquired that skill. As I haven't tried very hard to because I don't need to. But the few times I have tried, I sucked at it. Alright. So a lot more clips go into the outside than the lining. Well, for me anyway. All right, look at that. A lot of clips. Just gonna pop that down there. And then, so this is I'm gonna go a lot slower on this side than the other side because it's a lot thicker and I don't want to snap a needle is pretty much my main reasoning. I'm already using a size 18 needle. This machine can't handle anything thicker. So if it couldn't sew it, I would have to go over to the cylinder arm. And it won't handle it if I go very fast, but if I go slow like this, I shouldn't have any kind of issues. I really like that the um, foam is cut not inside the seam allowance. That makes this a lot easier as well. So I'm actually guiding the hand for the most part with my arm. This is a thick part right there, so that's again why I didn't start there. And now I'm back to the start and a back stitch. Trim off those tails. And looks lovely. Alright, last side. This side is going to be a little bit more tricky because there's nothing I can really tie this down with. Uh, but it's not going to stop me from trying. So I'm just going to kind of loop all of these handles together in some kind of weird middle knot to make sure that they stay out of my way. It's not the perfect solution, but it's going to do. So I'm going to clip the bottom and then a couple of clips each side. Again, to make sure it's all going to stick together and not shift. And this side is actually a little bit thinner than the other side, which will maybe help because we don't have all those pockets. So you just want to make sure that all of this is tucked in there. It's also a really handy that we've um, basted or tacked all of the um, parts in that makes it much easier to do this. And I'm still making sure all of my clips face the gusset side. I like to clip or pin things in my lap. I find that easier because it's closer. So I'm not um, killing my arms having them out here. They're nice and close to my body. And I find that that's much, much healthier for my arms. I mean, it would be better of a workout if I did it over there. But I'm not here for a workout. I'm here to make a bag. Alright, I'm just going to pour some of them out. So again, making sure that this points down towards the bottom of the bag. If you do that consistently for all of it, it's going to help it sit nicer. But again, just a personal preference of mine. Last little bit. Alright. Home 
arm stretch for this. Again, point it down towards the bottom and clip it in place. I'm going to put one above that and just kind of add them in anywhere. I've probably got a little bit overkill with the clips. But then again, I also know it's not going to shift while I'm trying to stitch it. There we go. Home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Take out some clips so that you can get the bag in. We're going to back stitch. And we're going to go slowly around the whole bag. Always try to stop with your needle in the down position. Because trust me when I say it's going to help. I really do use my fake nails like little stilettos. The more I pay attention to it, the more I see it's a thing. So I'm actually bringing my arm in like this, which is pulling this bag around. So I'm not straining my arms too much because I'm not just using my hand and my wrist. It's actually my elbow that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting at the moment. the stitches and then back stitch and then I'm gonna hit pause and get the good scissors good scissors got so these are my class a knife point scissors these are the best for cutting through thick layers of vinyl uh, so I'm just gonna cut anywhere there's a curve I'm gonna cut the excess off because it's gonna help the bag to sit nicer when I turn it through So now we're going to go through the base of the lining and I'm going to grab the base corner of the exterior and I'm going to push it in and then turn it through. So slow and steady is going to win this race. Shoving it's probably not going to help all too much. So you want to try and make the actual outside of the bag as small as possible to roll the lining around it. If you can get the lining over the bulk of the exterior, the rest will just fold through. I possibly could have left a little bit more open, uh, but too late now. It will go. Oh, I've just got an itchy nose. You can start pulling out bits as you can grab them. Turn that bit over there and watch this. This is the turning point right there. See that? Now that that's over there, that's the hardest bit done. So now we can just reach in and slowly ease the bag through. Look at that. You can even go in from the base and push. Like so. And then I'm just going to push out those curves. Ah, oh, look at that. Ta-da! That looks nice. All right. Before we get too excited, we're going to stick our hand in through the zipper pocket and grab the opening and pull it through the zipper pocket so I can stitch it up. Now it should just be a nice quick little straight line because we only left the straight part open. And then back stitch obviously at both ends. 
trim off that tail. You can shove that back into the bag and then pull out the lining pocket. And I'm just going to use my fingers, my pointer fingers, to just turn under the raw edge to the inside and then pinch it shut. I actually do that same motion in every video. So I use my pointer finger and then my thumb and my middle finger to pinch it. And then we're going to back stitch nice and close to the edge. And then back stitch at the other end. And your bag is done. You can just tuck that back inside. Zip her up. And then you can pull your handles out as well. So there you go, guys. That is one zipper bag. Uh, Zanita bag, sorry, not zipper bag. Without a drop-in lining. I hope that was helpful, guys. And until next time, bye!